Okay, we're live. I'm with Dan Hughes. He's going to take his QCI exam recertification. Um, do you have the script? It's right over there, right? Right next to you. Yeah. And we're going to read through the script and then go out to the warehouse and get started. So. I'm Adam Clardy O'Neill, and I'll be the proctor for today's exam. I need you to verify for the camera that I have not provided any training to you related to the designation being administered. You have not provided any training. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Candidate has given me his ID. Um, do you have any special accommodation approval notices? Nope. Okay. Um, you are who you, you say you are, and we can see by the certification on the wall that he has his QCI certification, which expires uh, on the 14th of January in 2017. So he's all good there. Um, Cell phones or other electronic devices that may interfere with the exam must be turned off. Um, I need to take a digital photo of you with a sign with your first and last name on it. So I'm just going to stand against the door, the white wall. And on three, one, two, three. Thank you. So. You're going to have three and a half hours for this QCI exam. I'll keep track of time on my phone and give you updates every 30 minutes or so or whenever else you want them. Uh, please be aware this is a BPI exam. You're going to be tested on your knowledge, performance, of skills, and abilities as outlined in the BPI standards, field guides, and or appropriate certification scheme handbook. If the time limit expires, the exam will be stopped and the exam will be evaluated accordingly. We're going to walk around together while you're performing an analysis of the home. I'll be taking notes on the home as well as your performance. Please think aloud so that I might have a better understanding of what you're seeing and doing. The only questions I'm permitted to ask are for clarification purposes only. I'll not ask questions above and beyond the need to clarify your statement or actions. Um, I can only answer procedural questions and will be collecting and destroying any material you use to take notes on. If at any time potentially serious health and safety violation occurs, the exam will be immediately stopped and considered unsuccessful. Exam results are determined by BPI after the exam has been submitted for processing. When the exam has been processed, you'll receive an email notification from BPI with instructions on how to view your scores. You'll receive another email from BPI if certification has been awarded. Do you have any questions about that stuff? Nope. Okay, uh, I got a clipboard here. I always steal your guys's. Is that why we don't have any? Um, yeah, at least one or two. I don't like this front door. Okay. Sure, and I'm going to note on the exam sheet that you indicated that I did not provide any training to you. <coughs> Was it the 22nd today? Yes. Okay. You know where everything is, so I don't need to give you a tour out here. Um, if you need to take a break or anything, that's totally fine. Just let me know. And I will start the time in just a second. All right. Three and a half hours. Good luck. Well, I'm showing up to my inspection. Uh, first thing I want to do is turn on my personal CO protector. Uh, I'm going to measure the CO level outdoors. I'm going to measure zero parts per million, which is totally safe. It goes over 35 parts per million. Then I want to uh, abort my inspection. So I'm going to keep track of that as we go through, especially when we go inside and um, start the combustion testing. 
Next thing I want to do is get a feel for this inspection and see what was on the audit, the work order, what was in the file. And I just have to have the file right here. So I'm taking a look at the work order and I can see it's a description of work, whether I've added can crawl space according to specifications, or replace one window with the new vinyl one. And I can see that they did in fact bill for some R38 fiberglass for the attic, R25 fiberglass bats for the crawl space, seal the ducts, wrap the ducts with R19, air seal, replace the window, wrap water pipes, and install soft events. So I'm, I'm going to want to inspect that work as we go through the house as well as keep an eye out for health and safety and this opportunity. And let's see how this matches up with the audit. So just looking at the attic um, from the auditor's notes, he claims that you know, about half the attic had a existing R38 and the other half an R11 and they build for insulating the whole attic to R38 so that's a discrepancy when check with the, the auditor and the contractor to see you know who's inaccurate and get that cleaned up mm. and if they need to re-invoice or not. And I can see on the walls here auditor was calling out for some of the uninsulated walls to be insulated and, but I don't see that anywhere on the work order so I'm gonna go when we go inside and verify if the walls were insulated or not and go from there and then what else do we have here auditor called for the ducts to be sealed and wrapped I'm going to want to keep an eye out for that, and I know there's a floor on here somewhere. Okay, here we go. Uh, so on the auditor's notes for the floor, looks like about two-thirds of the floor was already insulated and the auditor was calling for one-third to be insulated so it's another pretty big discrepancy between the audit and the work order i'm going to want to take a look at that and see what actually how it actually turned out and i can see just going through the audit some of the, the appropriate signatures were not collected from the auditor and the contractor so before we close out this file, I want to I want to make sure that all the appropriate signatures are gathered and all the punch list items get completed. And I can tell already, I'm probably going to be adding some to that punch list. Now get into the diagnostics. I see that the blower door started off at 1200 CFM, and for a tiny house this size, we want to see that come down pretty significantly, mm -hmm. which we should expect based on the work that we asked them to do, air healing and duct healing. I can also see that the auditor performed an ASHRAE calculation to see how much ventilation was needed, but I don't see anywhere on the work order that any ASHRAE style fan was installed, so I'll check and see if the existing one meets ASHRAE and act accordingly from there. I can see the ducts were pretty leaky and leakage outside at 200. So with the duct seal, I want to see that come down to within our specifications of 10% of the square footage, which would be about 20 CFM or so. Just taking a look at our diagnostics, since we have some combustion appliances, see how the worst case was. Um, start off with a negative four on our worst case, so hopefully it didn't get any worse, anything any better, but we'll do some diagnostics and uh, follow up and see if it's within specifications. Also see the mold form was completely filled out and also the ashtray form. 
So now I got a, uh, an idea of what's going on on this uh, work order, on this job. I'm just going to take a, a walk around the house looking at the work that was installed and also looking for missed opportunities <coughs> or even potentially any damage that the workers might have caused. So going around the home here, we've got um, our crawl space access that's missing the cover and that's kind of a concern. And I'm just going to take a quick look at the performance of the door. Looks pretty good. It's got good weather stripping. Seems to function very well. But it is kind of lacking in some caulking, which is a concern for water intrusion mm -hmm. and air tightness in the home. So something that I'm going to put on my, my punch list as a missed opportunity. I don't see the auditor calling that out anymore. And continuing on to this side, you can see here's two of our new soft events for our attic. And they appear to be installed according to specification, according to our um, Oregon field guide. And uh, we got an air conditioner here that's got some pretty significant air leakage and water intrusion opportunities. Something I don't see that the auditor called for, so another missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go on my punch list. Now here's the new window, um, since we only have one window. It appears to be vinyl, double pane, which would be sufficient if the the ratings match which I'll check on the inside but I can tell that the trim and the flashing was not installed properly mm -hmm. I don't there doesn't appear to be any flashing nor any sealant so that's a pretty big uh, failure mm -hmm. they just poor workmanship they didn't use any caulking or anything to seal that up And that's about it on this side. Everything else is decent. Continuing around. The roof looks pretty good today, but there is an extension cord on the roof. That's kind of a, a health and safety concern, potentially electrical hazard. And I see that there's a roof vent with some fiberglass kind of coming out of there. Maybe a sign that they uh, plugged it up with fiberglass when they were blowing the attic, mm -hmm. or maybe they didn't vent the bathroom pan very well. I'll follow up when I go take a look in the attic. Our sprinkler system coming through, as well as our electrical and our propane line. Some pretty significant missed opportunities here. Um, those could have been caulked, got them nice and airtight. Um, our propane tank, I'd want to check with the local code, make sure it's okay to have it installed against a house like this. And here's our combustion air intake. Over here we have two more soft vents, and those look appropriate. But when the um, workers are installing, the crews are installing these measures, depending on how they were accessing these, like if they were on the roof, they would have to uh, wear some fall restraint mm -hmm. um, that was secured to an appropriate anchor point. Or if they're just working from ladders, having the right type of ladders, step ladders, uh, or if they're good on the roof, then there's proper extension ladder. But they would want to have the right PPE on. So working with power tools, they want to have eye protection, maybe some gloves, hearing protection, and uh, a hard hat, just in case anything falls on them. Maybe some steel-toed boots. 
And I can see the flue pipe from here. It looks a tad short, but it, the, what's most concerning is that it's missing um, a rain um, cap to keep the rain from coming down the flue pipe, so that's a concern, missed opportunity. And just check this other door real quick. Was anything missed on this? Ooh, it appears to be in great shape. It's got weather stripping and a nice door shoe. Seals up really great, but still the same problem as the other door. No, it doesn't appear to be caulked. Another air sealing opportunity that was missed. So some hazards are kind of a lot of stuff around the house, a lot of tripping hazards, um, the extension cord on the roof. And well, I'm just standing out, I'm going around the outside. I'm going to just check for some gas leaks. Into my gas leak detector, start up outside the house. <coughs> Excuse me. Try to get this thing warmed up. I'm going to start at the source, which happens to be this propane tank. I'm going to take my gas leak detector. I'm going to go around all the joints, seams union, 360 degrees. While not having the unit further than one inch away from the pipe. And while going about one inch per second. Now, if I do suspect that there is a leak, I'm going to verify that with some soapy bubble solution actually confirm if it is in fact a positive or it's a false positive. Check all the linear pipe as well. And I will continue this on all the accessible gas lines throughout the entire house, including those in the crawl space or attic. But being that this is a test and I have some time constraints, I'm just going to uh, use this as a representational representation of um, how I would perform that in the entire house. Normally, of course, I would check all the gas lines. Did not find any gas leaks, so that's great shape. Checking on the fuel monitor, still reading zero parts per million, which is totally safe. So, next I'm going to take a look in the crawl space, take a look at the work that was done down there. The workers, when they were installing the insulation, they should have been wearing the appropriate PPE that would have consisted of having a respirator, some good uh, filters, type of filters, since we were working with fiberglass, as well as wearing a bump pad, coveralls, gloves, eye protection. If they're using any power tools, hearing protection. But being this is a training house, I'm gonna just take a quick look under there. And how the work turned out. So I can see that the floor was, is now fully insulated, which is great, but there were some discrepancies in the paperwork I'm going to take a closer look at. It. They do have ground cover down in the seams. Plenty of overlap, so that meets our 
our organ specifications but there is some of the plastic on the wood which is a concern it's, it can lead to dry rot so I'm gonna have to fail them on that and add that to my punch list because uh, the workmanship is not doesn't meet our standards and as for the floor insulation I want to make sure that it's totally in contact with the floor fills this cavity completely and they build for R25 craft phase fiberglass to bad and these at least the majority of them if not all of them are unfazed so that is a discrepancy there though according to our specs um, it would be okay if the floor is insulated with unfazed but since on the work order it says craft that's that's a problem so technically it's a, a non-conformance I'm going to want to follow up with the auditor see if we absolutely have to have craft face in this situation and if we don't I'm um, just going to have them re-invoice but if we do then they're going to have to come out and remove it and then install a vapor barrier to prevent vapor diffusion through the floor so our twining um, so far looks to be pretty good. I want to make sure the ends, ends of the bats have a proper reinforcement so it doesn't sag. But they were also asked to air seal some of these penetrations. This electrical here and doesn't no doesn't appear to be air sealed, so that's a failure. They're going to have to come back. I'm going to add that to my punch list. I'm going to have to air seal that. And they were also asked to wrap this water line. And it actually appears to be pretty good, but they did make one mistake. And that's the seams are facing up instead of down, which is a requirement of our specification. So unfortunately, they're we're going to fail on that too. Now let's see where the pipe goes through the floor. And that seems to be pretty good. Not any significant gap there. So, a few things going on my punch list here. have to definitely uh, clear up the discrepancy between the square footage of the fiberglass. <coughs> check with the auditor about this non-conformance and they definitely failed on the air sealing <laughs> and just checking on the way out the certification card is got some discrepancies as well the numbers don't match up so we've got a serious disconnect between what the auditors saw, what the crew said they installed, and what was actually invoiced. So I'm going to have to follow up with all those parties and get that cleared up so everything's mm. aligned appropriately. So I'm getting pretty close to um, continuing my inspection inside but before I do that or as I'm doing that I want to interview the client and make sure um, that they're satisfied with the work so I'm going to ask you to sure. fill in as the homeowner so Adam um, tell me about the work was when it was in progress were they pretty clean and on time yeah they were on time I was at work whenever they were here so I'd let them in in the morning and they were usually gone and locked up by the time I got back but I never found any messes at the house great I'll take a little note of that and they were always on time so would you say you're pretty satisfied with the work that they installed for the most part uh, I think the auditor had mentioned the walls were gonna get insulated and that never happened I'm not sure why 
and they did a little bit of damage to the walls on the inside and I'll show you when we go in there. Okay. They said they'd come back and fix it, but they, they just haven't they yet. They haven't yet. Yeah. Now, since you had the work installed, would you say your level of comfort <clears throat> has improved? Well, you know, living inside a warehouse, it never gets too warm or too cold, but yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit more cozy in there. Heats up quicker. All right, well, that's all the questions I have for you. I'm going to take a look inside. And as I'm going in, keep an eye on the CO monitor. Make sure that it is in a higher level inside, which it is not. It is zero parts per million inside, which is totally safe. So we're going to keep on going. And I'm going to just do a quick walkthrough inside the home. I can see all the supply ducts are in the attic, so that's where they'll have to do their duct sealing. Um, here's a window, and they left the uh, information card on here, which is great, but I can see right away that the U value does not meet our specification, so they use the wrong type of window in this application. Uh, the U factor of this one is 0.34 and our specification calls for um, one of almost um, you know, twice that level, 0.220, um, depending on what the auditor called for. But in either way, it doesn't meet the specification, even the minimum. So the wrong material, they installed it wrong, they didn't air seal inside or outside. They're, that's definitely going on my punch list. They're going to have to come back, just totally re-install a new window. Now for the walls, I can see some interesting things going on here. That's some different insulation types. Over here, kind of poorly installed. And lower R value here, not filling the cavity. And then this is a huge concern that they didn't insulate any of these open wall cavities which the auditor definitely recognized on his audit but yet it didn't make it onto the work order of the invoice so i'm going to follow up with the the auditor or the agency and see well if there was something prohibiting this maybe lack of funds and if not i'm going to uh, ask for a change order have the work the um the crews come back and install it's craft face fiberglass with the vapor barrier facing the interior and then finish it off with some nice drywall so we get a nice air barrier there really help improve the performance of this wall and align that thermal boundary continuing on i can see kind of some of the walls that were banged up by the workers Oh yeah, uh, just right, right there, right and there. up there. It looks like they put a ladder up against the wall. So when they come back, I'll throw that on the punch list as well. Mm -hmm. Make sure they fix that. And here's our thermostat, CO detector. Let's see if that thing works. <coughs> Excuse me. Used to be working fine. And we've got smoke detector. And let's see if that thing works. Yep, that thing works. That's good. Let's see. Um, We've got our exhaust fan and our control and on the surface definitely doesn't appear to meet ASHRAE which is a concern since this home is going to need um, to meet ASHRAE specification. I'll follow up with that a little bit later. Next I'm going to take a look in the attic. See how they did insulating. And I'm 
just going to grab a measurement tape. Again, um, just like with the crawl space, you're going to have to wear the same PPE in the attic. Bump hat, respirator, coveralls, eye protection, and uh, hearing protection if they're using any power tools. So I'm looking at the um, insulation card here, and they're saying they install uh, about two bags of insulation, and so if they are trying to meet an R38, the insulation is going to have to be 13 and a quarter inches, and. So one bag, we're going to take 19 bags to cover 1,000 square feet, so we're at about 200, so that's, I'm doing my math right, about two bags. So I'm going to see if we do in fact have 13 inches, and I can see that they did blow in fiberglass, a lot of hills and valleys. Well, let's see if the minimum is 13 inches and a couple low spots but most of it is well above 13 inches but since they're coming back already I might have them rake it out a little bit mm -hmm. make sure these low spots are above 13 inches have a nice R38 but um, I can see immediately that the ducts were not sealed with mastic or anything else and also not insulated, which mm -hmm. is definitely a failure. They just totally ignored it. So they're going to come back and apply mastic and wrap the ducts with the R19 vinyl back to the insulation. So we get a nice vapor barrier. The attic hatch itself looks to be well installed for the most part we have four layers of foam board on the attic hatch and each layer has r10 so we have a nice r40 mm -hmm. there some weather stripping that was kind of interesting way that they installed it there but it appears to be performing and um, our heat producers have got a nice um, metal baffle to keep the insulation off of them, holding them back three to four inches. And then our bathroom fan. Almost totally buried, but I can see part of it sticking out where it goes through the roof. Appears to be positively connected. So I'll just want to measure flow and verify that it's still performing. Mm. Our soffit vents did have the appropriate baffles and solid cardboard to keep any insulation out of those vents. And our, um, our flue pipe does extend through the roof appropriately, so no concern there. It's been 30 minutes. All right, I'm just gonna park this ladder behind you. Sure.
So on a job like this, definitely with the attic, I prefer to do uh, in progress inspections, anything that they're going to cover up, mm -hmm. uh, the attic, the duct work, make sure that they do the proper air sealing before it's buried. So definitely a need for in progress, especially this type of job. And then I can also do random inspection or sampling of the crew and their certifications and their job site documents from work order to specifications. Make sure they're following the lead, safe work practices, wearing the proper PPE. I'm just gonna see how this fan is performing. So I'm gonna take my um, exhaust fan flow meter, grab a manometer. And I'm going to tee off this two inputs just so I can measure pressure and flow simultaneously. Like that here. Currently on room E1. I'm going to turn on my manometer. On pressure flow, I'm going to select the device EXH and have the ring on one. And turn on the bathroom fan and the switch. It appears to be a basic switch. It doesn't appear to meet ASHRAE. So I just hit hold here. I've got negative 1.8 on ring one. And that says 59, and I measured 58. So that appears to be a pretty, pretty accurate measurement. 58 CFM. Next, I'm just going to see what the flow is rated for. And the fan is rated for 70 CFM. So it's a little bit low, but it does mean ASHRAE. So that's good, but some pretty significant missed opportunity here. It doesn't appear that the crew did any air sealing in the attic. So that's a huge fail. It didn't seal around the fan or any of the other penetrations. Something that's going to go on my punch list. Make sure they get that all completed. So it doesn't mean ASHRAE by any means. So I'll see um, if they can install a um, proper switch and have it meet ASHRAE. And if not, then they're going to have to replace the fan as well. Or install a, a second fan somewhere else, but probably just replace that one. Now I'm going to move on to my diagnostics and I'm going to set up my blower door, just get that ready.
nice and secure. Take a nice long hose, get that five feet away from the blower door. Side reference hose into reference channel A. I've got my fan on channel B input to the fan. And I'm going to get the house set up for, uh, I think we'll start with some combustion testing. So, along those lines, I'm going to get my other combustion equipment ready. And then follow me up here. Fill my combustion analyzer. And move your back up just in case. So what I'm waiting on that is <coughs> time to calculate my minimum draft pressure. And measure temperature outdoors. Appears to be 57 degrees. Okay, 57. Uh, let's see, divide by 40 minus 2.75, and I get a reading of negative 1.32. So that's my minimum draft pressure. So when I measure the draft, it needs to meet or exceed that measurement. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be um, like 1.4, 1.5, or um, greater. I'm right, gonna go my combustion analyzer. All warmed up outside, so I'm gonna bring that in with me. And I believe that's all I need. So we have a natural draft atmospheric propane water heater that's commonly vented with our draft induced 80% propane furnace. Both of these appliances are atmospheric. Mm -hmm taking their combustion air from this room which in turn is connected to the outdoors. Their common vent here doesn't appear to have the very good rise so that's concern. Something that I'm going to add to my punch list just to get the appropriate rise on here make sure it meets a proper specification. Also where these come together is kind of concerning. This wise, not the appropriate size for these, and not really positive. 
other than connected either. So I'm going to want them to screw those pieces together as well, just for longevity. So now I'm going to need the house set up in natural conditions. I'm going to close all the exterior windows and doors. Make sure the attic hatch is shut. That the appliances are in the pilot. The water heater is. And the furnace is set to off. Um, so I'm just going to borrow this green hose for a moment. Grab a a new manometer here. Bring that into my pad zone. So I've got my mind going out. And I'm going to get ready to put this appliance into worst case, but before I do that, I want to measure the baseline. So I have run pressure, pressure. I'm going to hit baseline. I'm going to start recording the baseline. I'm going to let that baseline stabilize. Here's the negative 0.1 pascals. So I'm gonna hit enter. Now I'm adjusted for the baseline, which was negative 0.1 pascals. to a negative 0.8 so definitely worse I'm going to take a look at this door position here see if it's worse with this door closed or with it open and it's actually a little bit worse with the door open and the fan actually pulling on it so I'm going to leave that door open and now I'm going to check my air handler and I'm going to verify if the furnace air handler makes our worst case with this combustion pine zone better or worse and it's made it significantly worse and now I'm just going to check the door position one last time and if I had more than one door I would repeat this on all the doors and closing the door actually made it better so I'm going to leave it with the door open which makes it as worse as possible which is about a negative 1.8 which is significantly better than what the auditor had measured at a negative 4.0 and our limit for this type of appliance mechanically assisted uh, furnace commonly vented with water heater is negative five so we're well within those mm -hmm. limits it passes on that aspect and what i'm going to do next is turn on the water heater and i'm going to measure spillage draft and CO. I'm going to grab um, oh, it's right here. pressure probe and then just hose. They're all ready. See this manometer, I'm going to turn it off, clear out the baseline and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assign it a new job of measuring the draft on our water heater. So I'm going to connect my, my probe on the input and have the mode on pressure pressure. And my combustion analyzer is ready to go. My manometer is ready. And the last thing I need is a mirror. And under worst case, I'm going to um, fire this appliance it has one minute to establish draft. If it doesn't establish draft within, within one minute, I'm gonna cancel out of these worst case conditions and I'm gonna test it again under natural and see if it performs then. Mm. So I'm gonna crank this water heater up. So the fire, there it goes. I'm gonna go around this draft hood with my mirror and check on all sides and ensure that 
the mirror doesn't fog, mm -hmm. which would indicate spillage. And so far, so good. Does not appear to be spilling. So this appliance passes the spillage test. Pretty much no spillage occurred. Now I'm going to measure the flue gases inside the throat of the water heater. And I'm going to take a look, mainly concerned with the CO production. And what this stabilize here. I want to give this appliance a chance to get to steady state somewhere between five, but no longer than 10 minutes. And it's definitely warm enough. So I'm going to take a look at the draft. Be careful not to burn myself here. And my draft is very, very good at about an angle of 3.6. So that's excellent draft moving. Definitely um, exceeds our minimum draft, which was at one point, uh, 1.3. Worst case draft is much better than the auditor, so that's a great improvement. So let's take a look at our CO. Appears to have leveled off on this side at 22 parts per million. I'm going to check the other side of the baffle, verify that it's not in fact higher. Is in fact the same reading, it's so 22 parts per million. I'm going to keep an eye out on my um, personal CO monitor, currently reading zero parts per million, um, totally safe. Now, normally I would leave this, this water heater on, but this test one gets awfully hot so I'm gonna just for safety I'm gonna turn it off just to be on the safe side because there's no actual water or anything connected to it but in real home I'd leave it on and continue to test my commonly vented furnace which I'm now going to fire Again, in the first minute of operation, is established draft. Also, you get my thermometer ready to measure. Temperature. I'm take my mirror. And I'm just gonna check this connection between the flue pipe and draft inducer fan make sure that it does not spill and it is not check this little hole no spills there either so it passes the uh, spillage test but there are some safety concerns on this furnace the door is missing and it is powered by an extension cord, which I'm, I'm pretty certain that doesn't mean specification. So something I'm gonna uh, put on my punch list, get this furnace and the flue pipe upgraded to meet specification. There's no hazards. Um, like here we have uh, a burn or shock. Not 
to mention this gas line is um, definitely a trip hazard there. So I'm going to take my combustion analyzer. I'm going to measure the flue gases. Give that a minute to a couple minutes to reach steady state. While I'm waiting on the furnace to warm up, um, just reviewing my test results from the water heater. Um, we measured 22 parts per million on the CO and it passed the draft and spillage test. So according to BPI specs, um, there's no extra required for seeding with work. So that's great. And our um, ambient CO is still at zero, so still doing good there. steady state and we have a reading of 33 parts per million on our CO and normally I'd want to measure efficiency but here to be having some difficulty. Yeah that's all right. What would you compare the efficiency reading to? I would compare it to um, the the AFU E rating on this furnace, which is 80 80 percent, the steady state efficiency should exceed that a little bit, but not too much. Otherwise, it will cause some condensate problems. It's interesting because it, it had an efficiency rating yeah. on the water heater. Because it's probably because the oxygen reading is not dropped sufficiently. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. That's usually when it kicks in, yeah. when that goes down. Wonder if you have a bad sensor in there. Could be. It could be the appliance is malfunctioning. Either way, I'm going to follow up, make sure there's not in fact a problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, another thing I want to check uh, on this appliance is the temporize. And we are reading about 96 on the supply temperature. And then I'm going to measure the return. And I'm going to take a look at the manufacturer specifications. They would like a temporizer of 30 to 60. So I'm going to let this turn and level off. So it's about 74 gives us about a 22 degree temp rise, which is below 
what the manufacturer recommends to 30 degrees. Last thing I'm going to measure is draft. reading about a negative three, three point, that's eh, sort of time average. So we're measuring 3.0 on the draft and that's a negative, which exceeds our minimum negative 1.3. So that's excellent. I'm going to turn the furnace off. Water heater is off. So according to BPI specs, our CO measurement was about 30, 33 or so. So that means our, um, according to BPI spec, we're going to recommend that the CO problem be fixed because the CO is between 26 and 100, but it passes, fills in draft, and uh, worst case the pressurization limit is not exceeded. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to recommend the CO problem be fixed. Next, I'm going to uh, measure the CO on our uh, oven, which happens to be next door. And you're at about an hour right now. Alright. And I'm going to grab that thermometer. Sorry. It's okay. We want to check for any gas leaks in the entire system. But I also want to ensure that there's nothing inside of the oven. I'm going to turn on the fan or open a window. I'm going to turn the appliance on. Crank up the temperature, but make sure it doesn't go into self cleaning mode. And I'm going to turn it on. Put my combustion analyzer in the back here where the gases are exhausting. Making sure I'm in the appropriate sleeve there. And I'm going to give it about five minutes to warm up. While it's doing that, I'm going to measure the um, the temperature of the hot water make sure it doesn't exceed 120 I'm going to go to the nearest faucet to the water heater let the water run normally I put the water fill cup put the thermometer in the cup is there a cup over there? Yeah. There you
So water heater temperature is about leveled off at 115, which is a little low, but if they can get by with it at 115, mm -hmm. that's fine. Normally prefer it not to exceed 120, which it definitely does not. It's back on our oven here. another minute and while we're waiting on that just gonna look over some of my people work so just a little bit about how I maintain my job logs and notes um, I keep information specific um, to the client uh, in the client file but I keep complaints separate and in the contractor mm -hmm. file that the complaints related to so I can keep track of how many they've had in a given time and whether or not those issues have been addressed and then anomalies I just kind of keep um, a whole separate uh, Excel sheet on that where I document what the anomaly was, you know, what it was related to, whether it was an audit or the work or the contractor, that sort of thing, just for my own uh, records so I can keep track of that. As well as any of my, my handwritten notes and stuff, I keep those in the client file that are related to so I can reference them. And if I need to communicate anything with a contractor, I'll write it up formally nice uh, email and phone call so it's it's been about five minutes and our CO is at about 70 parts per million which is well below our action level of 100 parts per million if it exceeded 100 parts per million then we would um, refer to our BPI standards which I left in the house continue back to the house. between 100 and 300 we install a carbon monoxide detector and recommend um, that the oven be serviced bring that CO level down mm. if it was greater than 300 we wouldn't proceed with any work until the CO production was lowered mm. and an appropriate um, kitchen fan exhaust fan was installed that moved 100 CFM intermittent or 25 continuous Now I'm going to uh, move on to my diagnostics. Let's start off with my blower door tests. I'm going to make sure the house is set up. All the windows and doors are closed. I had to catch this close. Um, water heater is in pilot. The furnace is off. I'm going to set up my manometer for pressure flow and I got my hoses all connected so measure baseline mm -hmm. Press start Baseline is negative 0.1. I hit enter. I set my rings up to B2 since it's a pretty small house. 
it up. I'm gonna cruise to negative 50. I'm reading about 730 CFM, which is a significant improvement from where it began, but there's still a lot of obvious air leakage opportunities. And I'm going to investigate for some more additional ones in Florida or on the ground outlets, around the doors, around the trim, around the window. And sure enough, this window, since there's no ceiling, that was done is leaking a lot and also the air conditioner very leaky a little bit through here in our open wall cavities especially where these penetrations come through the floor we also have some can lines Bad. They appear to be IC rated, which is good since it's buried in mm -hmm. inflation. We've got a huge um, bypass here into the attic that was totally ignored, even though they were asked to air seal in the mm -hmm. attic. They, they didn't. That is a failure that's going to go on my, my punch list. Also with blower door on, I'm going to measure my zonal pressure to any of the relevant or significant uh, interstitial spaces like the attic, crawl space, garage, and see if there's a significant um, amount of leakage coming from that area or whether or not there's uh, adequate air barrier between this zone and that. So in the attic, I have a measurement of about 43, which tells me that the, the attic is mainly disconnected from the house, but it's not as, there's not a, as, as well of an air barrier as we'd like to see. There's room for improvement. Mm -hmm. And once they do the air sealing in the attic, I would expect that to be approaching 50, a lot closer to that, which would mean that it's totally disconnected from the house. And I would do this in all the other zones, crawl space, mm -hmm. et cetera. But um, for exam, I'll do representation. But I will measure for leakage mm -hmm. in the um, ducts. And this is more of a measurement of where is the leakage, not so much how much the leakage mm -hmm. is. And I don't think I'm going to reach it. There we go. Give me a nice short man steak. safety issue man we got to quit the test right now I'm sorry <laughs> that could have hit me <clears throat> got a hot on there yeah more powerful suction next one here a little bit better but still above the one uh -huh. which is 
cause for concern. Definitely better. This last one. It's about a one, so more airtight than the last, but still not as quite quite as low as we'd want. But it does give us an indication where any remaining leakage is located. priority over you know, where the remaining leakage is located but I'm going to do an additional duct leakage test with the duct blaster and measure the total leakage CO monitor measured one part per million, mm -hmm. which is still totally safe.